we're going to be looking for some peeler crab today. Just come down near one of the harbours. Because we need to get some fishing bait. Just going to clean my bucket out. Crispy, soft, but not soft enough. Here's one that's actually shed its shell, but it's a little bit hard now, so we're going to let it go. This one has already shed. You see the colour of the green on it. It's uh, probably shed a week or two ago. Now its shell's going hard, or it's hard enough. Hard enough to give you a pinch, put it that way. Clamshell, not been dead long. I wonder where this water comes from. Do you reckon it's seawater that's ingressed into the land? Yeah, because it's not likely to be any kind of water source, that's for sure. It'd be pushing out the... Um, Let's have a look. Whoa, 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 don't. That's an Asian shore crab, mate. Oh, it is, yeah. Have a look at this. Shore crab. Can we get this on film? This is what Damon's just found. Species. He's just found an Asian shore crab, an invasive species. Invasive. And it's a female yeah. as well. Yeah. Which is a bad sign. You need so to crunch what? her. Mm. You're going to take it, though. Crunch it first. We'll, we'll have a look at this a bit more in later. Yeah. Keep this because I want to film it. Mm. And you want to get rid of it as well. Hey, Damo. I've just found two Asian shore crabs. Really? Yeah, we better collect them all up. So I've just found two more Asian shore crabs. So they are, looks like breeding here. Which is what people worry about. That's another female. And this one is a male Dane. Okay, two more Asian shore crabs. And there's another one. This is crazy. We found more today than we've ever found over the years in this one session so they're obviously getting a stronghold in this position possibly or breeding in this particular area i believe the water's here a little bit warmer because you've got a power station near here and uh, it always used to release a bit of water which kept it warm around here so anyway we're going to keep collecting them then we're going to head off to see if we can see if the marine biologist over here is home we're going to speak to him Right, so we just been down the beach collecting uh, peeler crab, which are these here. And you can see, um, when you take a leg like that, that soft, soft um, leg. And what we've been finding is a lot of these Asian shore crabs. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head up to the local marine bar and just see if he's home and have a chat with him because um, we found, I believe it's eight today. And Two I, found, as well. I found the original one back in 2009. And since then, I've only ever, well, I think we've discovered three or four. And today, like I say, we've discovered eight, so we need to take these up and uh, have a chat with him and see what he's got to say. I'll start though. So anyway, we've come down to see Richard Lord, who's a resident marine biologist in Guernsey. And we've brought the Asian shore crab to, uh, to have him have a look at. Yeah, and you've got seven in this uh, tray. Yeah. And uh, it's Hemigrappa sanguineus. And it was thought to arrive in La Havre some years ago and spread along the coast. Uh, it probably came in ballast water. Ballast water, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they've really become invasive in Jersey. And Dr. Paul Chambers from Société Jerseyaise has been looking for them in Guernsey. He did a brief shore survey of Belgrave Bay a few years ago and didn't find any. Obviously, you were the first to bring them to me. Yeah. What, about 10 years ago now? Something I think it was like 2009, that? I think. Was, was it? First so, one, yeah. so this 10 years. And uh, I've got a record of it, but I have to look it up. And uh, they're meant to breed three times a year, potentially produce 50,000 well, offspring. 
Um, they are um, quite aggressive and they might outcompete the uh, common European shore crab. The irony is that the European shore crab has now invaded North America right. and that's causing problems for them there. It's just a species that is introduced, doesn't have a natural predator, can acclimate to local conditions and fill a niche very rapidly. Yeah. So when these are found, we don't want to replace them, we want to take them out of the yeah. system and allow our regular European shore crab to prosper. Yeah. Um, they have a very strange uh, uh, um, square front, they are quite different to the, uh, I think it's good if uh, Damien <laughs> comes back just to show the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You really yeah. need to, yeah. I can take these off to the camera. Yeah, okay. So this is the two different species. This is our normal crab here, yeah. and this is the invasive one here. Yeah. You can see the Turn shell around, you can see is me. square the thing and is the underneath. Know, is that you got a female there? Yeah, we've got several females. Okay. And we've got the males. I found the male and the female together under the same stone. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Not and I don't know what you're doing. I've never seen that. No, that's Defense, maybe? Isn't it? Oh, that's a lack of water. Maybe it's it's going to be a problem, I think. Mean, yeah. I mean, when I first saw, when, when Damien found one, and I thought that we found, he found another one, and then I moved up looking for crab, and then I found two, then another one, and I thought, oh my word, this is going to be a problem now, because I haven't seen any for for years, and then all of a sudden there's a, there's a little colony of them. Well, in that one find area. so many. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, when uh, there's a bryozoan um, called water spora, which uh, I found in Q2 Marine in 2007, and um, a few years later I found it on the fish key underneath in the pontoons, and now every rock in Belgrave Bay has it. And I was a pretty poor um, late last year, kind of in autumn, and it was all on the rocks there. And Sue Daly and I think. Um, Laura Brampton were in the Gulio Caves and Sark, and it's all over the walls there. So these things take time to establish yeah. themselves, but once they take off, there's no kind of holding them back. See, I wondered on where they are, because further up, I, I mean, I don't know if they still are, but they used to pump water out from the power station, which is warm water. Yeah. And they've been using the power station because they haven't had the power cable. I know, yeah. So I wonder if that water's been keeping that warm, because when we used to fish there years ago, you used to find very... You used yeah. to find... circulating system now, but I don't right. really know. Right, because I know you used to get a lot of small bass there. You could get them in February, right up the beach there, you'd find small bass, and right. it was always a bit warmer. And also, when we heard, looked for peeler crab, that's the first place we'd ever go is down there, even in the harbour, because the crabs would always peel earlier there than on the beaches. So that was where we'd start, and once we they finish there, and then we go to the beaches, and they start on the beaches. So that means to speak to go into electricity to see if they're um, recirculating their water. If there's so there you go, that was Richard Lord, he is a marine biologist on the island and he was the original marine biologist. I took the first one, discovered back in 2009 and that one was actually sent up to the Natural History Museum in London where it was recorded and logged and then a couple of years later we found, or I found a couple more, there was one also found up in Jersey I believe and since then, around Guernsey at least, we haven't really heard much more about those Asian crabs. Um, it's almost like they sort of may have disappeared, you know, they may have been arrived and then died off. But obviously not, because today when we went looking for Peeler, we found another seven of them. And like I say, I haven't found any since, what, well, eight years ago. And then today, all of a sudden, seven in that one area. Now the original ones were found on the other end of the island, so or the other side of the island. So they weren't found in the same place either. Now, what effect this is going to have on the native species, only time will tell. Um, let's hope it's not a really bad impact it has. Now, if you see any of these around the island, I'm sure Richard Lord would be very interested to know, I would be interested to know as well, to kind of gauge what Im impact they're going to be having, or what impact they are having, and how quickly they are breeding. Uh, if you get them up in the UK as well, that would be interesting to see them as well, to see where they are, are they breeding, how are they spreading, and what effect they're going to have. Like I say, this is something we're only going to find out in time. So there you have it. Another invasive species arrives and sets up home.